I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we are talking to an ordinary man who does extraordinary things. And if he can do it, you can do it, and possibly even this extremely ordinary guy can do it as well. He's also the author of the book, Many Worlds to Conquer. We are delighted to have him on Spotlight today. Our thanks to the marketing team at Sweet Spire Literature Management for helping us put TJ in today's Spotlight. TJ, thank you so much for joining us today on Spotlight. Well, thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about your book or tell the viewers at home what Many Worlds to Conquer is all about. It's about a series of adventures, correct? Yeah, so as, as you already alluded to, I, I have zero special abilities. I'm a very ordinary guy in that sense, but I've done a couple of things that other people have described as extraordinary. And in the book, I describe 10 of those adventures. I've climbed to the highest mountains in the world. I ski to the North Pole. I ski to the South Pole. I escape from Alcatraz. I, I, I also paddleboarded across the English Channel, I mean, just to name a few. And that's something other people have described as extraordinary. But the good news is that I'm such an ordinary guy that if I can do this, you can do this too. In fact, you can do anything in life as long as you commit yourself to it. And I'm not saying that everyone should climb a mountain or should escape from Alcatraz, but everyone has their own mountain in life to climb. Whether it is learning Spanish, whether it is taking up those tennis lessons that you always wanted to do. But this book is really meant to get you out of your comfort zone and just to go for it. And you'll be surprised what you can achieve as long as you've got that commitment and you're willing to go for it. Absolutely. Like you said, we're not all physically inclined. We might not be able to ski or surfboard or climb a mountain, but there are other obstacles that we have in our lives. We have limiting beliefs, thinking we can't do this or we can't do that. As soon as you think you can't do it, you can't do it. But if you do have that positive attitude, if you do set a realistic goal, you can achieve it, no doubt, right? Well, and that's the interesting thing about these adventures, because it helped me to develop what's called a growth mindset. And, and the growth mindset is based on the belief that you can influence your abilities. This, this, nothing is preset in life, nothing is fixed. If you get out of your comfort zone, if you push yourself, you can actually develop that growth mindset because once you've achieved one goal, the next question you're gonna ask yourself is, hey, if I did this, what would be next? And that's also how I climbed mountains that were consistently higher every single time. But you can also use that growth mindset in your personal life because you'll be able to grow. You'll be able to take on something that you weren't able to take on, whether it's taking a risk you know, at work or whether it's asking that person out for a date, whatever it is. So you grow as a person. I think that's important. So these adventures, they have, they have a lot of benefits. Do you use visualization as a tool? Do you picture yourself doing it first? I, I use visualization um, and somehow I, I have also been able to, to focus on, on what's positive, what's good, and just to block out the negative. So it's important that you do that because if you're always focused on what goes wrong, you're just going to be, you've got to be bogged down all the time. You've got to think next time, well, hold on, this could go wrong, that could go wrong. If you accept that your track record, whatever it is, is not going to be 100%, but if you teach yourself just to focus on the positive, then the next time, that's also what's going to keep you going. And visualization is a very important part of that. Absolutely. It's the it's, same as when you're in a golf ball. You hit it quite often. If you're going to focus on that bunker that you shouldn't hit your ball into, that's where you're going to hit your ball, right? But if you focus on the target, that's where you're going to hit your ball. So you've got to be faked to be able to focus on what you want to achieve and just block out the rest. Exactly. Focus it. Focus on it like a laser beam is what I always say. If you look at somebody like Tom Brady, He's the greatest quarterback of all time, in many people's opinion. He was a tall, skinny guy. He looked more like a basketball player than a football player, but he never stopped trying. And even till this day at 45 years of age, he's still working harder, I think, than any other man in the NFL. And why was he so successful? Because he was told that he was never going to get anywhere. He would never be a quarterback. And he thought, you know what? You're telling me I can't? I'll show you I can. And that is also something that has driven me in my adventures. If someone tells me, you cannot escape from Alcatraz. Well, I remember very well when I was standing on that Bank of America building, I was standing on one of the highest floors and you actually look down in San Francisco, you look down on Alcatraz. And, and I saw Alcatraz in the distance, there was Angel Island. 
And that is the island that in 1962, those three escapees swam to from Alcatraz. And I remember that as a kid, I saw that movie with Clint Eastwood, Escape from Alcatraz. And it's always a bit ambiguous whether they made it or not. But when I saw that, I said, oh, I can do this. The problem was I couldn't swim. I called up a swim coach and I said, listen, coach, what do you think? He said, can you swim? I said, absolutely not. He said, you know what you're going to do is you're going to take swimming lessons. You're going to call me back in a year. We're going to see if you're good enough, and then we'll decide. I said, that's what I'll do, Pedro. I took my swimming lessons. I called him up, and I had to do a, you know, I had to do a swim test. And he said, you're pretty lousy still, but you know what? I think you're good enough. You can do this. And then we came up with a plan, and I did it. And there are many people who said, the water is too cold. The currents are too strong. There are probably sharks down there as well. This cannot be done. But yes, it can be done. And I can tell you, if I can do it, those three escapees, they had a much better incentive than I had. I'm 100% sure they made it. So just like Tom Brady, if someone says, can't be done, oh, I like to turn the impossible into the feasible. And that's a strong driver. I think part of what you're telling our audience is that first you come up with the goal, but then you come up with a workable strategy strategy to achieve that goal. That you come up with a good game plan. You have, if you're not a swimmer, and you're going to escape from Alcatraz, you have to learn how to swim, and so on and so forth. So putting together a good game plan or a good roadmap seems to be part of your advice. You know, it's interesting you say that because quite often setting that goal, especially making it public, that's the toughest part. The rest is almost execution. But if you tell yourself, that's what I'm going to do, and then you tell your friends, you're going to be held accountable. And that's where you're gonna get everything. You know, you, you're gonna dig deep. You got to make sure that you're gonna get, you're gonna get it done. And quite often, that's the hardest step. And a lot of people always hear that little voice in the back of their mind that's gonna give them the excuse not to do it because I've got this obligation, I've got that going on. No, just do away with that. Make your goals public, and then the rest is simply down to execution. I mean, eighty percent of success is showing up, and that's exactly the same here. But you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. It is very uncomfortable once you actually get into that specific project that you say, okay, now I've committed myself. My God, I only have six months to go for it. But that's the whole point. You got to get out of your comfort zone in order to get somewhere in life. I always say I'm most comfortable outside of my comfort zone because I, <laughs> I'm a kind of person who likes challenges like yourself. Of all the challenges you put yourself through that you've documented in this book, which was the most challenging? Yeah, that's a difficult question. I would say that probably the most memorable one is me skiing to the North Pole. Uh, there were a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, 2009, Robert Perry, uh, the first man to stand on the North Pole in 1909. Um, it was the centennial anniversary of that achievement. And I read about it in the papers. And I always had this in my head that I wanted to go to the North Pole. I thought, if I ever want to do it, now is the time because, of course, we know what climate change means. We know that the ice is thinning. I thought, if you want to do this, how long can it be done? So I got a group of eight friends together. We did it, obviously, with a better professional guide. Um, it was an incredible experience, a lot of hardship. One of the issues is that someone fell through the ice, another person got frostbite. Um, ultimately, we did stand on the North Pole, but what was also important is that we did it with a purpose because this was not just about us standing on the North Pole where we also happened to meet Sir David Attenborough. He was standing uh, on the North Pole because he was shooting the frozen planet. But what was important for us is that we could do this with purpose because we raised money for the World Wildlife Fund. They have a climate research program and that gave that specific adventure also meaning. And for us, it's very important, especially for me, if I do these adventures that there is something more to it than me just standing on the summit or getting something done. I mean, this book is also 100% dedicated to the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. So my nephew was diagnosed when he was two years old with type one diabetes. And, and once I heard that um, all of a sudden these adventures, because I started to raise money for the JDRF through my adventures became a lot more purposeful. And it's important because I've got my own reasons why I do these adventures. But now there's also other people who can benefit from it. And um, it's an incredible honor to be associated with the JDRF. I'm an honorary patron and we're doing a lot with them. And 
hopefully a cure is close, as in probably five years we'll be able to come up with not just treatment, but actually a cure. Fingers crossed. Fingers are crossed. Prayers are being said. TJ Halbertsma, you are an ordinary guy doing extraordinary things, not only challenging yourself, but also challenging the world to come up with the cure for type 1 diabetes and why not type 2 diabetes, which might be a serendipitous effect. Once we find the cure for one, we might find the cure for the other. The name of the book is Many Worlds Man to Conquer. Many Worlds to Conquer. Go out, get it, order it, download it, read it, challenge yourself, come up with your own game plan to turn yourself from an ordinary person into an extraordinary person. TJ Halbertsman, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan. True pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, on Spotlight.